The question for all of us now, as we prepare to engage some very difficult decision making, is what will win out this time? Real, transparent problem solving or partisan politics that result in finger pointing, generational warfare, and broken solutions? Joining us now with his first reaction to today's draft proposal, the fiery deficit hawk himself, hailing from Texas, uh, Republican uh, Ron Paul. Dr. Paul, what do you think? Well, I'm always hopeful, but I'm very doubtful. I, I don't think much will come of this. I think they will fight uh, over it. I mean, they're talking about cutting some uh, military spending, which I'm all for. As a matter of fact, I wrote a letter along with some others to recommend this, and, and they've at least addressed the matter, and they talked about bringing a third of our troops that are stationed overseas. But they're liable to put them into Afghanistan. So uh, I don't think these are real cuts. I, I, just, I, I just think they're dealing with this in an incorrect fashion. It's, it's not strictly a budgetary problem, it's a philosophic problem, a philosophy of government. As long as we're going to be the policemen of the world, and as long as we pretend we're going to run a welfare state from cradle to grave, it's not going to work. And these figures, how can you rely on these figures? How do they know what the revenue will be? They don't even know what the employment rate will be in a couple years. So uh, I'm not all that hopeful. They're not going to start anything until 2012. They're talking of a total $200 billion cut by, by 2015. I mean, <laughs> What does that mean? Last year, the national debt went up $1.6 trillion. Yeah. So, so uh, I'm skeptical, but I'm for all the cuts they have there. I don't think I would vote against any cuts that they have suggested. If, if you were to be able to set the North Star, however, for a conversation about not just the deficit, because the deficit obviously is symptomatic of a philosophical operating system in this country, all not right. just at the federal government, but in the state government and all the rest of it, and for that matter, a financial system, a bond market that indulges uh, the politicians' behavior, uh, how, where would you begin the process of correcting it if you think this is philosophically misguided? Well, I would say that we should have a new foreign policy uh, and bring all our troops home and defend our country and not police the world. And I would uh, wean ourselves off of the uh, off the welfare state. But I think there's one law that you could pass that would bring it, both of those issues to a halt, and that is uh, prevent the Fed from monetizing debt. So if Congress spends too much, which they always do, the Fed comes to their rescue and they buy these bonds mm -hmm. in, that, in order to keep the interest rates low. But if if the Fed wasn't there, they they're the perpetrators of this mm -hmm. because if the Fed didn't do that, interest rates would go up. Interest rates would go up and would hurt the economy. And the members of Congress say, hey, why are interest rates up? Well, we're hogging all the capital. And they would have to quit. But we are, that system is so ingrained, and, and that would be an overwhelming task. Not, not very many people would entertain that thought. Uh, so I, I don't think they're on the verge yeah. of changing their philosophy. <clears throat> I think we're working toward a, a dollar collapse. And uh, as long as they're buying our bonds and all, I think this is going to continue. But I already see, I think there's hints that they're buying our bonds less enthusiastically right now than they did a few months ago. And, and let's talk about that. So let's presume that the dysfunction comes from the ability for politicians to spend money they don't have uh, and the ability to spend that money of, is empowered by virtue of the Federal Reserve and the central banking system which allows money printing. Uh, if you were to look at the world's reaction to that at this point as we see Obama traveling the earth, uh, it is uh, wholesale uh, critical. Uh, basically, the America is being accused of currency rigging against the world the same way we accuse China of its currency rigging. Uh, commodity prices right. are uh, commodity prices are at records. Uh, that's a clear indication of people's skepticism of of the value of currency in general. There's a reason cotton's up 100 percent, corn, gold, uh, oil, and uh, the World Bank head floating the idea of tying currencies once again back to gold as opposed to having fixed interest rates which is what the federal reserve uh, obviously advocates for when you look at all the little pieces the explosion in commodity prices the political backlash that, that forget china being a commerce currency manipulator we're a currency manipulator uh, and then more and more rhetoric that really is aligned with you uh, do you have any faith that the financial markets might demand the changes uh, from our government that uh, our politicians are incapable of demanding 
Oh, oh, eventually, and just think of the different attitude about the $600 billion proposal compared to the $1.7 trillion injection. The attitudes are changing, the attitudes are very important. Once they get inflationary expectations that we're, they're seeing the price inflation on the commodities, pretty soon that is going to be injected into the future, then everything the Fed does to lower interest rates will raise interest rates. You know, just, just printing money eventually does the opposite, and I'm afraid that's what we're moving into. So that's why watching, watching some of these interest rates carefully will give us an indication and what the foreigners are doing and what China is doing. But to, uh, to just uh, jump on China and say they're all at fault without us looking at our deficit and the way we manipulate our currency, uh, I, I think that's a cop-out. So, so uh, I, and you know, obviously, I, I agree with you in that regard. If we were to back away from this for just a moment, though, and look at the complexity of this problem and the need to try to avoid generational warfare in this country between the old and the young, the need to try to avoid the demonization of the Chinese or any, any other foreign entity uh, as we try to deal with this, the, the problem solving here. How do we create an arena for problem solving as we look at the riots uh, emerging in London, uh, as we look uh, right. at, at what's going on in, in China, as we look at what happens when you, just, when you basically barbarically try to address this, in my, and that, that barbaric is my my word, how do we alter the path to create an environment where we can really have a conversation globally, China, the Middle East, Western Europe, and America, that addresses the fact that there's $60 trillion in debt here. I mean, we, we all know the numbers. We need a real meeting in the, on the, in the world at this point, and it doesn't feel like the American political leadership uh, is creating the space for that to happen. That's right, and that's where our responsibility is. The Congress, is, uh, they have a responsibility for that, and that's what they should be doing. Now, another suggestion that could work if they wanted to, because, you know, conservatives are going to argue you don't cut a nickel out of military. Uh, I say that's not defense, that's military, and we should look at it. But what about another suggestion? Just go through the process and, and try to whittle down on the budget, get it as low as you can, and then have a rule and say, well, the budget is so many percentages, 20 percent over budget budget cut every single program exactly the same and uh, you don't have to do it all in one year maybe have a 10-year period and cut down you know a certain percentage until you get it balanced right. at least it would send a signal if they would agree to that but they're not going to I've heard a couple of our new freshmen even say hey you know there's not much we can cut we can only cut the uh, the discretion non-discretionary funds and uh, there is not enough there to cut and we certainly can't cut military that bothers me that you know freshmen are coming in with that attitude and they're throwing up their hands there's nothing left to cut yeah. you know well, you, so, but, but the, you know the alternative is, you, you know they don't want the pain of the cutting but the pain of destroying the currency as you know is going to be much worse, and, and that's and, what I'm trying to head and, off. And, 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 and the more we, I can have a bridge to you and you to me, because truly, without the proper theater to address this problem, uh, and with the kicking the can down the road being what it is, the commodity traders who walk around in New York talking about the blue dollar trade, buying commodities, buying gold, and waiting for the issuance of the new currency uh, in their minds, uh, <laughs> that should be avoided, obviously, if we can do it. And, and, and without creating the, the, the conversation, the beginning of that conversation, uh, there's no way we can get to the end of it. Thank you so much, Dr. Paul, for everything that you do in that regard. Thanks for having All me. Right. Uh, Ron Paul.